Are we back in? Let's, let's check to see that we're back up. Okay, we are indeed back online. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's move on to the things that you actually want to learn, and uh, and I will come back with a uh, little cookbook tutorial on how to make character names that change with in the context of the game uh, at a later date. To uh, <laughs> because uh, we're we're taking a lot of time on this. Um, so let's see. You asked, "What about making a custom dialog box with image?" Okay. So you mean like, um, let's say we have uh, make a let's make a little box right now. Um, new, create. Oh, Want to make it um, a, a rectangle that's wide. Um, Okay, and we'll make a box that is like this, and um, inside here we'll have uh, we'll have text, right? Or um, we could just make it like um, you know a pretty background um, where like there's a tree, and the tree has like a knot hole in it, and it's got like leaves. And it's you know it's autumn, so the leaves are falling and they're beautiful. And there's grass, and there's like a dog. And the dog's tail is wagging really fast. Okay, and uh, so we get like a we get like a background image. We're gonna ex we're gonna export a background image. I'm going to put it in the, uh, let's put it in the UI folder and call it, uh, text background. Okay. And then, so we want to make it so that our background, our text box has this image as its background, right? Uh, my understanding the thing that you're looking to have a frame and or background for the dialog box right um are there any image requirements to avoid uncalled image stretching on different screen sizes i would say that the best way to avoid bad stretching for different screen sizes is to do something very different from what i just drew <laughs> <laughs> and instead, we're going to make a, a texture that you would loop. Um, so we'll go like uh, 150 by 150, maybe maybe uh, 256 by 256, cool. And uh, we would uh, design our texture to be like a seamless, um, pretty... Pretty thing that um, let's go with a let's go with a ah. uh, let's go with a gray. Mm. That's gray, and we'll go with this darker gray. Okay, cool. So we've got our we've got our texture. <laughs> this looks like garbage, it's fine. And this is our uh, text background. Okay, cool. And then, um, so, we're going to start playing around with modifying the CSS now, finally. And the way we do that is we go into Style, and we find Main.CSS. And Main.CSS has all sorts of default rules that try to explain to you how to play around and do stuff. Whoa, wait, hold on. Oh, I'm in. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. I almost modified my old game that I was talking about <laughs> before. Uh, let's get out of there right away. And, uh, okay. Did I put it in the right place? UI. 
Yes. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the style folder, and inside the style folder you will find main.css. Main.css has all sorts of examples uh, for how you would go about styling things. So you get your general style where you would do things like, you know, put in your font selections and stuff, you know, stuff that you want the entire game to be modified by. So if you want every single word spoken by everybody and every single piece of UI information and everything to be in, I don't know, aliens font for your alien themed visual novel, you would put it in body. Um, simple button styles um, is styling the buttons that people click on. Um, ho button hover makes it so that uh, if someone hovers the mouse over the button, you can make like, a, I don't know, it change color or something. Um, and we're not going to go through all these, but suffice it to say there are a lot of them. Like, here's a button that specifically modifies the save slot and the captions for the save slots. Um, there's all sorts of these. Um, here's also where if you want to make specific styles that only affect phones of specific screen widths, Monogatari's definitely got that reactive stuff. Um... All of the games that I've made have been specifically designed for desktop computers, and when you start them up on your phone, it warns you, uh, you know, play on your phone at your own risk, bro. But, uh, but other than that, yeah. Um, these are things that I recommend experimenting with. But anyway, we're going to style the text box. So we're going to go to text box styling right here. T data component text box. And what we're going to do is we're going to play around with it first, and then when we find a thing that works, we're going to copy what we've done and then paste it into this uh, document. Because this document is where it is final, but while we're playing around and just trying to make it look right, um, we're going to be working here. So the text box is right here, and that corresponds to the data component text box. Cool. Um, we want to have a background image. And our background image will want to be the asset UI uh, text background.png. So, um, ah, come on. Maybe. Okay, uh, text mm, background image is asset slash UI slash text background dot PNG. Am I not allowed to? Valid property value. Oh, do I have to put in quotes? Hmm. Maybe I needed it. Why does that give me an invalid value? Maybe I need a dot here like that? No? That should work. Whatever, we're gonna we're gonna do it live. Um uh text their background image. So, uh, in CSS, when you want to give something a background image, it has to be relative to the CSS file. Monogatari's CSS file is located in the style folder. And because it's located in the style folder, we need to go up one directory before we can get to the assets folder. So in order to do that, you start by typing in dot dot, which uh, two dots means go up one directory. And then we type in assets. Um, assets then leads to UI. And then UI leads to textbackground.png. I think I put these in quotes. 
I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to try no quotes first and see if that functions. Okay, I do not appear to have the background image that I want. Let's uh, check what happened there. Text box. Huh. Why am I getting an invalid property value? Hold on. We're going to do the most important part of game development. Uh, invalid property value CSS uh, background image. Ah, Stack Overflow. Background image property is for the image part only, not the position or the repeat. Um, oh! URL! Thank you, Stack Overflow. I was missing a very important part. I have to declare that my background image is a URL, and inside of the URL is all that stuff. That's important. Sure forgot that in the, in the heat of things right now, playing around. Okay, we have a background image. Wonderful. Um, this background image uh, is just showing once and it's just there. So we want to make that um, display more than once. Background repeat uh, both. Uh, it's not, right? Um, horizontal. Hmm. Let's go back to let's go back to messing around here now that now that we know that this works. Uh background repeat uh oh repeat x repeat y um round repeat space unset Wow okay um repeat right. Okay so our background image repeat it's just the word repeat I don't have to type both um I don't have to type that. I just want to type in repeat. It's repeat or no repeat. Cool. Um, and so now we have our uh, background image. Uh, this one is not the prettiest one, but I'm sure that you can come up with something nicer than this. And uh, this covers the page. We can also do things like uh, background opacity and uh, trans... Hmm. CSS background transparency. That's not what I want. Oh. Wait, really? Huh. Okay. Uh, apparently background images don't really do... I mean, you can with, like, filters. But uh, the background image itself does... If you want your background image to be transparent, what you gotta do, apparently, is... Uh, you know, make your background image transparent. Uh, like this. And now the background image is and now the background is transparent. <laughs> well, okay, I learned something today. Um, but yeah, so uh, you can do this. Um, you can also do like image borders if you wanted to put like. You can do. It's probably best to um, see what you can do with borders that are not uh, uh, border. Uh, solid um, five pixels uh, corner ray radius 
border radius. Um, five pixels. Uh, let's make it thirty pixels. Wow. Um, oh, the the pixel ra the border radius messes up the. Okay, don't use border radius as if you're going to use <laughs> transparent backgrounds. Apparently. Um, But yeah, you're probably better off um, making your borders and stuff in the CSS and trying to style it around, you know, the the options you've got available to you in the in the actual um, web browser, rather than using image uh, image borders. But image borders do exist. They're just difficult um like uh like this is an image file that's right here and there's this uh triangle and this rec uh, th these uh these diamonds and they display as you know borders and so you can you can make your own image borders like this um i find them really difficult to work with but you might be better at it than I am. Um, so that's definitely super a thing you can do. Oh, you can solve it with an overflow property on the box? Okay. Um, let's uh, inspect. Show me the box. Uh, overflow. Uh, Huh, I can give it a scroll bar, huh? Yeah, there it is. Uh, okay, and so that gets rid of this. It still has the... Well, I'm sure that's... I'm sure that is indeed solvable. Um, how can make characters blink their eyes as in, can I change some frames in loop, maybe calling frames from time to time to make the idle animation? So, uh, unfortunately, that's not a thing that Monogatari supports. Uh, you're you're thinking of a thing that um, it, it, Monogatari by itself doesn't support that, but you can do that by just making the GIF uh, because you can use animated GIFs for your characters as well as uh, animated PNGs because you know all major browsers support animated PNGs now. Um, and if they don't support animated PNGs, uh, animated PNGs render as normal PNGs and just show the first frame. So let's make a uh, let's make a blinking character real quick. Um, I assume that you would have an animation program if you're going to be uh, fussing around with that, um, with like wanting your characters to blink. I assume you've got ways to draw it. Um, Okay, there we go. Sorry, my pen is uh, acting up right now. I need new equipment. Um, okay, so we're going to go like this. And then... Um, uh, window... Dockers... Uh, animation. Um, and then uh, Windows, Settings, Dockers, let's go with uh, Timeline. Cool. Um, wow, these should be... These should trade places. Okay. Um, uh, show in Timeline. And then... Oh, what have I done? New one, um, just copy you and then paste you here. Uh, control E, platinum, cool. And then uh, just erase the eye and put in a cute little blink. And then uh, take this and move it all the way over here. Uh, so.
Cool. Um, file uh, render animation as video and I'll render it as um, where are we going? I'm going to desktop, our dist folder, assets, characters, shine, um, shine blink dot gif. Um, oh god, where's my ffmpeg folder? Uh, ffmpeg dot e c. Okay. What? Did that not work? Copy. There we go. Ugh. Okay. You kidding me? Open FFmpeg. You never realize just how much you don't have set up. Okay, can I change the background position with animation? Let's say my background is bigger than the screen, it's aligned to the right. How can I make an align an animation to change the background alignment to the center or left? I see. So you want to position the background. Um, that is uh, pretty easy to do. Um, CSS background position. And you can, uh, by default, set it to, um, you have a bunch of options. You have left top, left center, left bottom, right top. You know, you can set it to any corner and any position. Or if you instead want to fine tune position your thing, you can, um, you can give it uh, x, x percentages, or you can give it um, x pixels and y pixels uh, to position things more finely. Um, additionally, um, when we do scenes, we can also give scenes these uh, animations um, so that you can, uh, let's say, slide. Um, Where's a good slide? Uh, slide in left. And you can make it so that uh, using the CSS animations, which, um, you know, animate.css just has a whole bunch of canned ones. But if you want to actually learn how to make the animations yourself, you can make some much more specific ones for your needs. Uh, if you feel so inclined. Um, chances are, all you really need to do is uh, in the same function that you would... Um, probably the best way to go about doing that would be to, um, you know, in your script, have a function that would take the position of the background object. Like, you can select Anything that I'm doing here where I'm like right clicking, inspecting and, you know, getting the getting the position of the object and and like, you know, I find image source character class animation, blah, blah, blah. Um, in uh, JavaScript, you can, you know, uh, get object by ID and uh, get the get the object's ID and then, you know, uh, select it, and then you can uh, change its X, Y, Z position to uh, pan the camera left, right yourself. Um, that would probably be the best way to go about doing it, because then you have a lot more, you know, fine-tuned support 
but um, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to. I just looked at the clock, so let's go back to doing some, you know, much more, much more basic stuff. Uh, let's say that you want to have a dialogue branching choice option. That's probably more important than. Um, you know, actually getting the game into a functional, minimum viable product state where you can actually, like, do the things you want to do in the game is uh, more important immediately than the pretty stuff. But I hope that I have demonstrated to you that the pretty stuff is totally doable. Um, you just have to do it with CSS. And anything that works in web design will work here. Uh, and which, of course, you have uh, plenty to work with here. Um, so let's... Uh, is that okay, or do you want me to stay on... Uh... Oh, I never actually got that um, that animated face working, did I? <laughs> let's get that uh, Let's get that blinking girl on the screen. Um... Her. Can I blink? Does she blink? Yep. Oh, she blinks for a very long time. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's uh, let's render that one more time. Um, last frame is twenty six. Oh, she's still doing it. I thought I sent that. Did it not take because I didn't click away from it? Oh. Oh, I saved it to some place. Let's replace that. There we go. Now she blinks occasionally. We'll go back to our script here. And go to let's make a let's make a blinking and make it uh shine blink dot gif. Then we'll go to um blinking save open it. And now, now Sheena occasionally blinks. And she blinks a lot, actually, like once every second. But, but yeah. So, uh, so that that works. Um, you can also use uh, if you want the pictures to be, you know, a higher graphical fidelity than GIF is capable of. You can make um, an A ping animated PNG. Um, and there are, like, tools out there to do that, to, like, convert a GIF into an animated PNG or back again. Um, I particularly like using, um, A-Ping ASM. A-Ping ASM assembler is really simple. All you have to do is there's a GUI where you just drag a bunch of your frames into the thing and set the delay. Uh, you can you can tell it to go 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second or whatever you want it to be, and and then it'll just make an animated PNG for you. It's real small and real fast, and there's a Mac version if you use a Macintosh. Um, But uh okay, so let's let's get to what we were let's get to what we were gonna do and we're gonna show how to make a oh last question. What about assigning values to option in choices and retrieving that value later? Yes. That is definitely a thing. That is definitely, definitely a thing we can do. Um for whatever reason I failed to do it when I did it here. Um Oh I know why I failed to do it. I failed to do it because it's past my bedtime and I 
declared the name, but then I didn't call the n. Well, anyway, um, let's let's go over a uh, let's go over a choice uh, thing. So we'll pop open the pop open the um, documentation and go to choices. And uh, choices are pretty simple. Um, you start by well, they're they're a little different from a normal um, from a normal line. You start with one of these uh, curly braces, and you type in in quotes the word choice, and then uh, a colon. Do I want to call? It? Yes, and then another curly brace. And for safety's sake, we're going to uh, close our curly braces right from the start, so that if anything breaks, it doesn't break our entire script. It just it just breaks the choice. Um, so here we're going to uh, so we start with choice, and then a curly brace, and then inside of the inside of all of the curly braces. The, this inside of this set of curly braces, we'll have each of our options. Um, every choice requires two properties. It requires the text property and it requires the do property. The text is what will display on the box and the do property is what it will do. And what it will do is in fact just a line of Monogatari. Um, the same as this line, the same as this line, um, etc, etc. Generally speaking, what you're going to want to be in the do is the word jump followed by a label. And we'll explain that in a moment. So, um, uh, okay, so our first one is going to be, let's go with, um, do you want to say yes or no? <laughs> Uh, yes, colon, text, capital T, yes, do, uh, jump, yes, oh, and quotes, oh my gosh, uh, parentheses, uh, uh, commas, 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 commas. Um, no. Text. No. Do. Jump. No. Okay. Um, so now that we have uh, finished our um, is that right is that right yeah that's right okay now that we have finished our um, uh, our choice option we are going to make a new label called yes. And another new label called no. Make sure there's commas. And then um, inside of yes, we're going to write uh, oh, well, okay then. Um, we'll have uh, Shine say it. Um, oh, well, okay then. And inside no, we'll have her say you don't have to if you don't want to. Sure. And pop that open. Type some words. Hello, my name is you. Okay. Do you want to say yes or no? Yes and no up here. Um, we'll click yes. Oh, well, okay then. Um, or we'll click no. You don't have to if you don't want to. Fantastic. Um, clicking on yes made it jump yes. Which what jump yes does is it breaks from the current array of uh, of text choices or excuse me of uh, of strings. It breaks from the current array of Monogatari strings and it goes and finds a new array with the label yes, 
goes there and then starts playing those one after another from from the from the beginning of that array, starting with the first one. Um, when you load up a new game, what it does is it ba you can imagine Monogatari basically starts by saying jump start, and once it has once it finds the start array, it will then you know go through and go through and play everything in order. It comes to this choice. It, you click yes or no, and it jumps to one of those two labels. So we either jump to the yes label or we jump to the no label. Now, another thing you can do, though, is you, you mentioned that we could um, uh, assigning values to options in choices and retrieving that value later. So what you would do in that case is inside the label yes, you would include a function. And inside this function, we would go um, monogatari dot. Let's let's make a let's make a new storage variable. Let's not use Sheena here. Um, player choices. Um, yes or no choice. Um, and we'll we'll just save it as a I don't know a true by default. We'll, we'll make it a boolean. Um, Saver. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Monogatari dot storage. Getting. Um, dot player choices dot. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Got to stop trying to control tab around so hard. Um, yes or no choice. Da equals uh, true in that one, and then if we clicked no. We'll set it to false. And then after both of them, we're going to jump to the same place. Uh, jump to after choice. And then in after choice, um, okay, you chose player choices. Dot yes or no choice. Well, and if this worked and I didn't miss any of my commas and I didn't break anything, uh, this should in theory just play out correctly. And I missed an I missed a comma. Uh, let's figure out where it is. Uh, oh. Oh, I'm not supposed to have. Mm. Okay, um, not supposed to have semicolons in uh, inside of objects. Sorry, I apologize for that JavaScript. Okay, uh, type some words. Hello, my name is Yui, and I'm speaking to Yui. My name is Shine. Uh, do you want to say yes or no? Let's go with yes. Oh well, okay then. Okay, you chose true. Let's try again. My name is Yui, and I'm speaking to Yui. My name is Shine. I'm here. With yes or no? No. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, you chose false. Excellent. It just worked correctly. Um, what we did was we had a choice dialog option. And in this choice dialog option, we were given the options yes or no. 
If we chose yes, we jump to yes. If we chose no, we jump to no. Whichever one we jump to, the first thing we did was we had a function, and inside of this function, what it did was it found the variable monogatari.storage player choices, yes or no choice, and it assigned it a value of either true or false. Then, after that, uh, Shine says something based on what you chose. And then we jump to the same label, the after choice label. And in the after choice label, uh, she, the narrator says, okay, you chose, and then it tells us wh which one we chose. Um, and yeah, that would be uh, assigning values to options in choices and retrieving that value later. Excellent. We can also, um, the word yes, uh, or the word no. Let's put an exclamation point here also to make it all final. Um, doing it like this will change the, uh, will assign a string to the object and you probably want to uh, make it an empty string just to be safe because uh, it's supposed, if it's going to be a string it should be strings. Uh, strings are, you know, a string of letters. Um, Doing this will make it so that types of words, blah, 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 um, chose yes. Okay, well, okay then. You chose the word yes. And I have a period after my exclamation point because I didn't think ahead. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you get the idea. Um, another thing we can do that we probably want to do as like probably our last thing for the night is our conditionals. Conditionals are very similar in syntax to the way choices are done, where you will start with a uh, where you'll start with a curly brace. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna start with a curly brace. Oh, and and with <laughs> commas. Okay, we're gonna have that comma there, and then we're gonna start with our curly brace, and we're gonna start with the word conditional and our colon okay then we need a new uh we need a new colon close that and close that just to be safe um make those ones line up whereas we'll make this one uh yeah we'll make these line up cool um excellent uh so the first um, the first method you need in the conditional object is the is the condition, and what the condition is condition colon colon the condition is an anonymous function just like all of our other functions, um, but inside of this function we need to have something that returns I that returns either true, false, or a string. Um, in Monogatari 1.4, it can only be true or false, and it can't be a string. In Monogatari 2.0, it can be a string, and this is one of the reasons why I really like it, is because you can have a fancy condition that returns like a hundred different things. You know, there's like a, you can have a, you can have the real crossroads inside one conditional. Whereas, in 1.4, if you want to have multiple choices beyond just the first two, you have to do uh, nested conditionals, basically, where you check if it's this one, then that, and if it's not that one, then do another conditional. Does that make sense? Um, but we're, we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to do a true and false. Uh, okay, so we need to return... or we're going to do, uh, excuse me, we're, we're actually going to do our example right now. Um, condition function. Um, return uh, dot storage dot player choices dot yes or no choice. And so after our function, we will put our comma, our ever important perpetual comma, 
if player choices dot yes or no choice returns the word yes exact exactly as written then um say thank you for saying yes if it returns the word no exactly thank you for saying no and that's all done let's uh, test our function to make sure it worked and see which error message we get oh we didn't get any error message that time have some words hello my name is you I'm speaking to you my name is Shine. uh no uh, okay you chose the word no thank you for saying no this conditional can also have a jump. Um, this conditional can also... Uh, y y you can write jump, jump secondary, yes choice, you know, something else. Or you can just have, you know, text here. Or you can even have, like... I think you can put a function here. Um, let's, let's try that. Let's, let's try a function real quick. Um, we're going to use an alert just because it's the uh, easiest way to check. Um, alert, uh, no. Aha! And then, yeah, so that works. You can, you can put functions in your uh, conditionals. So that means that you can make a thing that checks to see if uh, a monogatari function was, um, or to check to see if a storage value w said a thing or not, and if and only if it says a thing, then do a function. You can also just make a JavaScript if, if else tree function yourself, but doing one that will actually like say words on the screen is involved whereas if you do this and have it you know say a motor it's it's better if you want it to say stuff okay at this point um yeah at this point i think you literally have everything you need um if then trees and uh you know conditions and choices as well as jumping to labels putting images on the screen and uh you know, two different ways to put images on the screen. Um, you know where the documentation is so that you can find stuff that I haven't talked about, such as, uh, you know, showing backgrounds um, and other things like that. Uh, and we've also got, you know, I, I have been working through the documentation to put in better... Uh, better like uh stuff for things like the gallery page how to you know how to lay out your images how to set up your gallery you've you've played visual novels where there's like a bunch of pictures and as you see them they're added to an image gallery well monogatari has an image gallery built in and other things like that uh with that all said i'm circling the drain here and I'm pretty tired so I think that that's enough for now and I'll always be around available in the discord if you have any more if you have any like more specific questions rather than uh, how do I get started I hope that this helped and I'm gonna go to bed <laughs> good night everybody <laughs>